In chapter 3, section 6, we're going to look at derivatives of logarithmic functions. And so we just need a pretty simple, well, I shouldn't say simple, these are, these are not the simplest things in the world to do. Um, we're going to use natural logs. So there's log of x, this is logarithm. If there's no base given, this is base 10. There's ln, which is, log, which is what we call the natural logarithm. natural logarithm and that's base e so the natural number e and then we can have something like log base bx which is log base any number base b but these two are the most common so log no base which is 10 and then ln which is base the natural number e okay when we have, and we're going to focus on ln, so we're going to use this property, if a function is the natural log of some function g of x, then the derivative of this is equal to 1 over g of x times g prime of x. So you're going to see this pattern. We're going to take ln of whatever it has. We're going to put 1 over all that stuff and then take the derivative of the inside. So we can look at problem 1 right away. It's, it's a piecewise function where it says f of x is natural log of 3x if x is bigger than 0 and f of x is natural log of minus 3x if x is smaller than 0. Well, let's just do those two derivatives. If f of x is natural log of 3x, then according to this derivative rule I just wrote down, the derivative would be 1 over 3x times the derivative of 3x, which is 3. But that's just going to be equal to 3 over 3x, which is 1 over x. Now let's look at the other one. It's natural log of negative 3x. Well, the derivative of that one would be 1 over negative 3x, times the derivative of the inside part minus 3x, which is also negative 3. So this would be negative 3 over negative 3x, which is also 1 over x. So uh, we just proved that here, put in the 1 over 3x, the 1 over minus 3x, they both reduce to 1 over x. So the derivative of natural log of a constant, so basically we can put any number in, if f of x is equal to the natural log of any number a times x, well, a cannot be 0, then the derivative of this is equal to 1 over ax times a, which is 1 over x. The a's cancel. Okay, so that's the first one to work with. Problem 1. Okay, and problem 2. So now we're going to play a little bit more with this. We have the function is sine of 9 times natural log of x. So the derivative, we have to use chain rule here. The derivative of the outside, f prime, would equal cosine. And derivative of sine is cosine, and we leave everything inside its parentheses exactly the same. But then we take it times the derivative of the inside part. Well, the derivative of this inside part would be 9 times the derivative of one, natural log of x, which is 1 over x, times the derivative of the inside part of this, which is 1. So we're going to get the derivative is just this 9 can go up here along with this 1. So we get 9 over x times the cosine of 9 times natural log of x. I believe I have it typed exactly the same. Yep, there it is. Okay, so that is problem 2.
Okay, in problem three, we have to use a property of logarithms that you probably haven't seen in a while, so let's review it. And that is this. If you have the natural log of x raised to some power, that power can come down in front as multiplication. Okay, so right now we've got a function as a power on x. Well, we don't want that. So to get rid of that function as a power, we're going to use this property. But to do it, we have to take the natural log of both sides. So we're going to take the natural log of y equals the natural log of x raised to the 8 cosine of x. And based on this property I just wrote, we can bring this entire power out front. So we're going to get the natural log of y equals 8 cosine x times the natural log of x. Okay, now we're going to take the derivative of the entire equation, including the left-hand side. So the derivative of natural log of y would be 1 over y times the derivative of y, which is y prime. Now on the right side, we actually have to use product rule because we've got two chunks here. We've got, let me see if color can help us here. We've got this chunk and we've got this chunk. So the, we're going to take the derivative of purple plus green left alone times green left alone plus the derivative of green times purple left alone. So fig plus jip. So I'm going to kind of do this without showing all the steps, intermediate steps. The derivative of cosine is minus cosine, minus sine, so we get minus sine x there, times the green left alone, plus leave the first part alone. Oh, I should do it in green since I talked about colors here. So plus leave the first part alone, times the derivative of green, which is 1 over x, times the derivative of x, which is 1. Okay, so what we're going to get is 1 over y times y prime on the left equals 8 cosine x over x, the second term I wrote first because of this minus sign, minus 8 sine x times the natural log of x. Now we're trying to solve for y prime. So we have to multiply both sides by y. So it's all that stuff I just wrote times y. But what is y? y was x raised to the 8 cosine x. Then we have everything I wrote. So this is kind of a trick, and we'll see this, um, this is called uh, logarithmic differentiation. So you have a right hand side where you have a power on top of your variable. The way you get rid of that is to take a natural log of both sides, but then you have to take a derivative of both sides, including the y. And the derivative of natural log of y is just 1 over y times y prime. And then to solve for y prime, you end up multiplying both sides by the original y function. So the trickiest part is probably typing all that incorrectly, uh, but if you see what I wrote here, that's exactly how I typed it, and that is correct. So just be careful. Um, this is probably the first time you've seen this technique called logarithmic differentiation. It will not be the last time. Um, and that's, that's kind of a way we can avoid those functions as powers. Okay, problem three. For problem four, we have the function is the natural log of 49 sine squared x. So f prime is going to equal 1 over all of that, 49 sine squared x. So again, notice, 
I just write one on top of everything inside the ln, the natural log. One on top of that. The hard part now is doing times the derivative of the inside. The derivative of the inside would be 49 times 2, bring this 2 down, and then it's sine of x, but then we have to take times the derivative of this inside, so it's like double chain rule here, and the derivative of sine x is cosine x. So we're going to get, <clears throat> we have 2 times 49 times sine x times cosine x on top. On the bottom we have 49 sine squared x. And what you can do is you can say, okay, this 49 and this 49 will cancel. This sine x will cancel with one of these sine x's. So we're left with 2 cosine x over sine x. But if you recall your trigonometry, cosine x over sine x is cotangent of x. So the whole thing reduces to 2 times cotangent of x. You can kind of see how we have to work uh, chain rule maybe even a couple times in a problem like this. Problem 5, pretty similar. So we have some y equals the natural log of, and they did absolute value, 3 plus t minus t cubed. Why do they do absolute value? The reason they do absolute value is if you have y equals the natural log of x, x has to be bigger than zero. So um, I won't go into reasons why. You should have learned that in uh, pre-calculus or even college algebra. Uh, basically, you can try this in your calculator. Type in natural log of zero. It'll say error. Type in natural log of negative any number, negative one, negative five, negative 20. It will say error because the domain is not defined on negative numbers. And the reason for that is because these have to deal with powers. If it's natural log, it's base e, so e to some number. Well, e to some number can never be zero. So you can type on your calculator e to some number. You'll never get a zero and you'll never get a negative. Okay. So that's why the absolute value, we're forcing this to be positive. Now, there could still be an issue if it becomes zero, uh, which we'll see in a future problem. But for now, y prime is just 1 over all of that stuff times the derivative of this stuff, which would just be 1 minus 3t squared. And so y prime is just 1 minus 3t squared over 3 plus t minus t cubed. And don't tr you can't simplify any of that, so you can't come in here and try to cross off t's or 3's or anything like that. So there is nothing that factors out and cancels evenly. So that's your answer for problem five. Problem six. Okay, we have y equal to the natural log of e to the x plus x e to the x. Therefore, y prime is one over all that stuff so notice I wrote it exactly the same, times, this is the interesting part, the derivative of these things. Okay, the derivative of e to the x is e to the x. The derivative of x e to the x, we have to use product rule. So it would be the derivative of x, which is 1, times e to the x left alone, plus leave x alone, times the derivative of e to the x, but that is e to the x, so that so those two terms would come from the derivative of these two terms using product rule. Okay, and then we can put that on top. These are really the same thing, 1ex, 1ex, so we really get 2ex out of that, plus xex all over ex plus x, e, x. But notice the top 
has both terms have ex. So we're going to factor out ex and be left with 2 plus x in the bottom as well. They both have ex in them. So factored out, there would be a 1 there, 1 plus x. Now these ex's can cancel, and y prime is just 2 plus x over 1 plus x. And notice the niceness of this one, there is no ex's left. So it's just 2 plus x over 1 plus x, or problem 6. Okay, problem seven, pretty similar. We have y is equal to natural log of x squared minus 2x. And I guess they didn't use y here. They used f of x, which is fine. Function with x as the variable. Therefore, the derivative of this function would be 1 over x squared minus 2x times the derivative of the inside part, 2x minus 2. 2x minus 2. So we get the derivative is 2x minus 2 over x squared minus 2x. And there's no simplifying that can be done there, so that is the derivative. Now, now they ask for the domain, and this is the domain on the original f of x. Now I had just got done saying that if you have natural log of x, Oops. then from that, x has to be strictly greater than 0. But if your inside is more complicated, like x squared minus 2x, you just make that whole thing strictly greater than 0. So let's start from that. We are saying that argument of natural log has to be strictly greater than 0. So what we do here is factor out an x and get x times x minus 2 strictly greater than 0. Now that creates two points of interest when this is equal to 0. This is equal to 0 when x equals 0, so this thing will kill off the whole thing, or x equals positive 2, which would also kill off the whole left-hand side. Now what we do is we form a number line with those numbers in mind. So we have two numbers of interest, 0 and 2. And we are going to pick numbers around those numbers. So a number smaller than 0, minus 1. A number in between 0 and 2, positive 1. A number bigger than 2, 3. And we're going to plug those three numbers into this equation and see if they're bigger than 0. So let's start with minus 1. We get minus 1 times minus 1 minus 2, which is minus 1 times minus 3, which is positive 3, which is bigger than 0. So this side is going to work. We get a number that is positive. Let's try 1. We would get 1 times 1 minus 2, which is 1 times minus 1, which is minus 1, which gives us a negative number. So notice, minus 1 is not bigger than 0. So this one's false. Let's try 3. And again, I'm plugging it into this equation. 3 times 3 minus 2, which is 3 times 1, which is 3, which is bigger than 0. That's true. This is positive. So our domain is any number up until this point. So that goes minus infinity to 0. And then from 2 to positive infinity. And the way you would type that is you would say, negative infinity to 0 with parentheses, it cannot equal 0, unioned with or combined with, start at 2 with a parentheses, it cannot equal 2, all the way to infinity. Okay, so that would be how you would do that one for problem 7. Okay, problem 8, they want us to find an equation of the tangent line. So we've seen this before. So basically we want the equation of the tangent line minus some y1 equals the slope of the tangent line times x minus x1, and they gave us x1 and y1. But we have to find m tangent, which is the derivative of our function evaluated at this x1. So they said if y 
is natural log of x squared minus 4x plus 1, we need y prime, which is really slope of the tangent line. Well, that would be 1 divided by x squared minus 4x plus 1 times the derivative of that stuff, which would be 2x minus 4. So we're going to get 2x minus 4 over x squared minus 4x plus 1. Now that would describe every slope of every tangent line to the original formula. We only want one tangent line, and that's when x is 4. So we replace x with 4. x is 4 from here, right here. And we get 4 squared minus 4 times 4 plus 1. This is 8 minus 4 over 16 minus 16 plus 1. Those 16's cancel, and it's just 4 over 1. So this purely coincidence, we use 4, and the answer is 4, purely coincidence. So the slope of the tangent line is 4. So y tan, the equation of the tangent line, uh, I forgot a term here, minus y1, which is 0, equals the slope of the tangent line, which we just calculated to be 4, times x minus x1, which was 4, so y tan, this zero is not going to matter, so I just have to distribute this 4, would be 4x minus 16. Okay, so that would be the slope of the, that would be the equation of the tangent line at that specific point of that curve for problem 8. Okay, problem 9. We have f of x is equal to 2 sine x plus natural log of 5x. And he immediately wants to find the derivative. So that would be minus 2 cosine x. No, no, no. Plus 2 cosine x. Derivative of sine x is cosine x. And there's no switch in signs, so it's not minus, it's plus, so it's plus 2, plus 2. Sine becomes cosine. Now, natural log would be 1 over 5x times the derivative of 5x, which is 5. So f prime is 2 cosine x plus 5 over 5 would cancel, so it's 1 over x. And if you plot the original function uh, versus the... <coughs> derivative, you will get this curve here. And I encourage you to go to decimals and try that, or you can pick x values and plot a few and you'll see that it, it matches up with these two curves here. That's problem nine. Okay, last problem, we also have to use logarithmic differentiation. So they give us y is equal to square root of x to the 3x. So again, once again, we see, uh-oh, we have a power that's a function on top of our variable. So we are going to take a natural log of both sides. And what that's going to allow us to do is, by properties of logarithms, powers come down in front as multiplication. So we're going to get natural log of y is equal to 3x times the natural log of square root of x. Now we can take our derivative. The derivative of ln y is 1 over y times y prime equals product rule on this one again, derivative of 3x is 3 times natural log of root x left alone plus leave 3x alone times the derivative of natural log of square root of x, which would be 1 over root x, times the derivative of root x, which would be 1 half x to the minus 1 half. Because root x is x to the 1 half, so its derivative is bring the 1 half down, subtract 1. So all of that would be the derivative. So we get 1 over y 
y prime equals 3 ln root x plus this 3x is going to go on top. The bottom is going to be this 2, then root x times root x because um, x to the minus 1 half would dump that into the denominator with a square root symbol. So this is going to equal 3 ln root x plus 3x over 2x. So root x times root x is x. And now those two x's will cancel. And so we get 1 over y. y prime is 3 ln of root x plus 3 halves. Now once again, to solve for y prime, we have to multiply both sides by y. So in essence, I'm multiplying by y to cancel this y, which means I have to multiply this whole thing by y as well. And I just wrote it in the front right there. So we get uh, 3 ln x, square root of x, plus 3 halves. And then our original y was square root of x raised to the 3x times 3 natural log of root x plus 3 halves. And there's no simplifying that can be done. So you just cram these two terms together like that. And that will complete section 3.6 logarithmic derivatives.